for almost three years of the day now. And I think when we when we first discussed this idea, it just went through like butter with you as a concept. Uh, usually, it's pretty hard on bouncing concepts, but this kind of stuff. What made you actually, you know, sort of pick this up and say, let's do this? I think it's a kind of celebration. Yeah. And um, QP actually stands for that. We celebrate the youth, celebrate innovation, and. Thank you. That's the QP team clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Why would all these people come together without fighting? Because I think under the umbrella of QP, we have achieved that. It's a great thing. <laughs> and the world needs this now. Uh, to share ideas, to share happiness, and to exchange spiritual energy between musicians, between the young and the old. We're going to learn from the younger people, and they're going to probably take some advice from us. But we're going to create music. Super. Thank you so much. Good to thank you, Gareth, and body the spirit of, of jamming. Uh, Salim Suleiman, you guys, you know, I, I don't know how you guys do it. Uh, I think you do. I was watching your documentary, and if you guys haven't seen Salim Suleiman's story on iTunes, you must uh, you must get it, it's called Shukran Allah. And the opening line of that is 80 gigs a year or something like that. And still, we have launched so many digital tracks with you that you create for the, you know, for the online audiences. Uh, most recently, at me, Nure Elahi with Abida Parvinji was phenomenal. How do you make the time, what's the discipline to get you to actually focus here as well as what you're doing in your real lives? Um, it's really, I mean, I... I Quite honestly, I feel like I'm on a vacation for the past 25 years. I really don't think I work. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're really blessed that we do music. It was like that back in college also when we seen it back then. Um, yeah, you know, I, it's, I mean, I, you know, before I sleep, I'm thinking about it. If, just when I wake up, I, you know, I'm talking to Suleiman about let's do this and let's do that. And um, making spiritual music is now, is, is something which we, really you know feel great about because it's there's a time we, we make commercial music and we make devotional music and you know I feel devotional music somewhere has a, a fantastic timeless quality so every year we do that uh, you know uh, the month of I mean just uh, on the eve of Ramadan Eid we release a devotional track um, this is a great moment for us to uh, you know music is also a beautiful knowledge. It's a lot of. It's a, it's, it's it's great power. You know. Um, I always look at it like learning, interacting with. You know. I mean, for me, jamming is going to be learning. It's going to be interacting with new artists and uh, you know, fun people. I'm going to learn a lot. I'm really looking forward to it. Really. That's awesome. I think uh, all the digital superstars are looking forward to that. So, would, should we be expecting spiritual music from jamming? Any any clues? Or, uh, <laughs> well, music is always spiritual, isn't it? <laughs> right on. <laughs> but um, we'll see. Okay. We haven't really decided what we're going to do. Now the carrot out of the bag, I see that. <laughs> awesome. I've been enjoying doing film music uh, for the last decade or so now, and uh, I feel very fulfilled as a film composer. And just at that time when I was looking to do something different and you know break into other avenues. That's when uh, I got a call from Samir and uh, when he narrated the entire concept to me, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, being brought up in a musical family, my father is, has been a film composer, my grandfather also. Uh, it could be that, you know, sometimes we get into a pattern and we always approach music from one mindset. But uh, here I went through this entire portfolio of artists who were doing different kind of music, different thought processes. And I thought it would be very interesting to engage with them, you know, exchange ideas. As Salim said, a lot of learning would be definitely uh, something that, as a musician, I could gain from this project. And lastly, I don't know what, but there's some connect. Some of my most successful songs have been with first timers, with newcomers, relatively newcomers, if I put it that way. Not that they are, but I think that uh, fresh perspective really works for my music. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Who's done such a, such an amazing body of work? 
but I'm hoping that with Jamin that we can actually associate you a lot more, at least in the digital world, and bring you out because I think a lot of the youth need to see you out there and know this is Mithun. And we're hoping to do that with you and Jamin. Sure, sure, why not? Awesome. Okay, the special effort. What more do we need to do to get independent music to the level of mainstream? And unfortunately, mainstream in India is, is almost just film. Uh, how do we make independent music a lot more mainstream? Do you need more venues? Need, uh, where people can hang out, share knowledge, no drinking a lot of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, marketing tools. Okay. Venues actually, because in, a, in, the, in the US or in the West, if an artist needs to get popular, they go to uh, probably a hot truck, a cafe or, or a bar, right. bar, unfortunately. <laughs> and then mini concerts or, you know, they just promote their music so much and they take 10 years or something and they become a big star because people know them by then. Oh, I, I've seen this person. But here we have uh, cinema theaters. Right? And but not, not that many live places, like probably like a, you know, Blue Frog. Or, right. I think... It's shutting down. It's shutting down? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it's just moving venues. Yeah, this would change everything. I mean, definitely... Nothing's going to stop independent music to come out, and I feel like the the wave is coming, and the, the joy of watching live music, great musicians on stage, that's set in. I can feel that because I was in NH7, and I could feel the pulse of the country. Yeah, yeah, and so I hope that uh, people are getting this. Whoever is loaded with money, kind of build venues, little places where musicians can hang out, spread music and love. Yeah, and we'll stream that all live on YouTube, Satya. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> uh, Can I ask uh, sir a question? Oh, of course. Have to practice. Please ask sir this morning. Sir, you have to hear again. You have to hear again. I love Great, no, thank you so much. I want to ask you a simple question. Uh, you must be seeing a lot of YouTube and people singing in many different languages. Uh, what are you seeing from coming, coming out from different parts of the country on YouTube? Uh, I think there's no gatekeepers, which is fantastic, because there's one place where nobody's controlling anybody. So nobody can blame this person for trying to suppress me, and all that is gone. If you have talent, you come up. Absolutely. And uh, if people like you, of course, the mean comments are always there on YouTube. Just have to ignore all those. <laughs> um, and somebody, one of my friends came here, a clip of somebody playing the air drill tune near a temple. I put that and you got some thousands of views. And that's the power of you know YouTube in a way. Um, in these days, in the troubled times today, I think one song can change people's lives, create an understanding, uh, provo provoke a great thought. Many beautiful things can happen. I feel like this people on stage should take that as a challenge. We are not only about love songs. So do songs which are beautiful, which could, you know, create a thought or change a course of prejudice or stigma and unify people in a way. Make them understand that there's a larger thing about humanity. And um, that's what is missing, I feel like, a vision to create a song. There's no imagine now. In India, I think Indian artists should do that. I think that is the whole power of independent music. Nobody's stopping you from that. But do it in a way where people are going to love it. I feel that I'm always keep cha uh, challenging myself, like, can I do a song like that? After Mahatma Jaisalam, none of the songs <laughs> was as effective as that. And uh, so all my work, I feel I don't even value it. Because that is a song which I'm looking for. Not that I should compose it, maybe somebody on the stage, you know, they can do that. Um, that is life changing. To appreciate every kind of music because people are there. India is, if you take the Asian subcontinent, there are many tastes there. Some people are sad, so honey sing makes them happy. Some people want melancholy, so they just wear them on. <laughs> <laughs> so we should, we should respect every art form. And it's not, I mean, it's a very individualistic taste, I would say. And, uh, that's my opinion. <laughs>